Welcome to Every Nation Dorado Congregation. We exist to honor God by establishing Christ-centered, spirit-empowered, and socially responsible churches and campus ministries in every nation. Here is a look at this week's announcements. Join us every Monday as we fast and pray corporately. We meet for face-to-face -face prayer between 5.30 and 7 p.m. You are all invited to join our hospital outreach on Saturday, 16th July from 2.30 p.m. to 4 p.m. We will gather at the parking area of the Central Hospital. If you have any further questions, please contact Aunt Catherine on 081-842-3166. We are excited to announce that our media prayer and fasting week will take place from Sunday the 17th of July to Saturday the 23rd of July. Corporate prayer will take place from Monday to Friday at 5.30 to 7 p.m. We look forward to how God will move in our church and community as we focus on His greatness in this week. Brick by brick, we are building towards the future. We invite all current building fund partners and any new congregation member to join us on Saturday the 23rd of July for an informative feedback and progress session at 10 a.m. right here in our new building. We will celebrate the end of our week of prayer and fasting with a Passion Night. On Saturday night, the 23rd of July from 6 to 9 p.m., worshiping and lifting up the name of Jesus Christ. We will be hosting our AGM on the 24th of July between 2.30 p.m. to 4 p.m. All members of Every Nation Winduk are welcome to attend. Please sign up on our comms group link or at the information desk. A Zoom link will be provided. For further inquiries, contact the church office on 081-127-0611. Our We Care Ministry is seeking volunteers to serve at the mental hospital. Do you have a heart to minister to patients by serving soup and sharing the Word of God? Then join us as a volunteer once a week between 9 and 10 a.m. starting the first week of July. Please sign up at the information desk. If you have any further questions, please contact Julia at 081-128-6381 and Grenda at 081-271-4031. Visit our website for any additional information at enwinduk.org. Let's commit to read, understand, believe, and obey the word. Enjoy the service. Good day, everyone, and welcome to this uh, broadcast uh, that we are doing. Uh, this is the second Sunday of the month, and as usual, it's Pray for the Nations. Uh, so welcome everyone, and uh, we're going to uh, just uh, cover two areas. Uh, uh, first, it's Thanksgiving, and secondly, we want to pray for the nation of Zambia. Uh, but first, just an exhortation from the Bible that says, Pray without ceasing. Uh, the Bible is clear that prayer is very important. We know that Jesus prayed sometimes through the whole night and other times a bit less as well. And so it's an important theme in the New Testament specifically. And uh, with that exhortation, let's continue to press in to pray for our families, uh, pray for your colleagues at work, pray for our nation. And so let's, let's get into uh, um, this uh, today's um, uh, two topics. Okay, Thanksgiving. Um, this is last time I was here, uh, we prayed for the Ochavarongo mission and I want to give some feedback very briefly to say that it went really well. Uh, we just want to give God all the glory and the praise for uh, the mission to Ochavarongo. We engaged more than 130 people there. Uh, we saw over 30 salvations and very importantly for us, our target was to have at least a minimum of 10 people that we had follow-ups. Uh, and so I can say that at least 15 follow-ups were, were achieved, uh, and so we we're really happy with that. Um, currently, Dave and his leadership team, they are busy following up these people. And so let's take a moment uh, to pray and, and give thanks to God. 
for going before us, preparing the um, Ochivarongo in the hearts of people uh, and really reaching and impacting uh, Ochivarongo for Jesus. Let us pray. Lord God, I want to give you thanks and honor and glory for what you are busy doing in Ochivarongo. Thank you for your blessing over the, um, the team of Vintu going there um, and just impacting that town for, for you and for your kingdom. Thank you for our engagements there. Thank you for uh, Dave and his leadership team in Ojibarongo who are currently busy following up um, and doing one-to-one -one discipleship. Lord, I pray a blessing over them. I pray that the impact will be a lasting impact. It will be fruitful um, and that you will protect the seeds that were sown in the hearts of people. Uh, keep on growing. Uh, your um, your church in Ochevarongo, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise and honor in Jesus' name. Thank you. Let us now continue to the second uh, prayer topic as we pray for the nation of Zambia. Uh, we are currently preparing a, a mission team, a 10-day mission team to Zambia, and we will go to Zambia from the 8th of August to the 17th of August, uh, now next month. Uh, and um, so as we are busy preparing the team, I want us to firstly pray though for the Zambian team though. Uh, that's the first prayer point. And the leadership team there is Daniel, Francisca, Chiku, Pamela and Inonge. Um, they are the leaders, the core leadership there uh, and they are busy doing one-to-ones. They are leading connect groups. They are leading the, the church fellowship over there in Zambia, and they're doing a good job. They're really working hard. Um, most of them are also uh, working, f they are fully employed as well in the in the marketplace. Uh, it's only Pamela who is um, fully working uh, um, on, the, on the campus, uh, full-time rather. So, so let us pray for Daniel, Francisca, Pamela, Chico, and Inonge. Let's trust God for the leading of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray for clarity as they are engaging people, clarity. Uh, you know, in terms of what God is doing uh, on the campus, in the community, as well as a lot of wisdom as they're engaging people every day. And then lastly, pray for unity uh, as they are working together as a team um, and as a church fellowship there in Lusaka, Zambia. Let us pray. Lord God, I want to thank you for Daniel, Francisca, Pamela, Inonge, and Chiku. I want to thank you for their obedience. I want to thank you, Lord God, that they are giving their time, uh, uh, you know, to reach people. Every week they are there reaching people. They are having one-to-ones, connect groups. I pray, Lord God, that you give them, um, the, you know, the wisdom and understanding as they are engaging people, as they're stepping out um, into the marketplace and onto the campus, Lord God. I pray for the infilling of the Holy Spirit, Lord God, uh, that they will experience just the moving of your spirit upon their hearts and as they're engaging that they will see people opening up hearts opening up lord god um, new places where they can speak and engage with people with power being effective lord god and being fruitful in the name of jesus i want to also pray for unity uh, for them as a team as well as a as a church fellowship in in lusaka zambia lord that they are working together that they are fellowshipping um uh, together as a team, um, you know, just uh, enjoying one another, enjoying your presence and growing as a team together. Lord, empower them to do your work and to build your kingdom in Zambia, Lord God, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's continue to the second prayer point, and that is we are trusting um, for the Every Nation Zambia uh, leadership to register uh, every nation officially as a church fellowship there in, in, in Zambia. Um, and that is, they have to register with government. It's a prerequisite. It's, it's something that is official, like official process there. Um, so let's pray for favor with government as well as favor at the University of Zambia, which is the biggest university uh, in Zambia. So um, let's pray for favor for them as they are engaging with this official process. Lord God, I wanna pray for favor uh, for Daniel and his team as they are busy registering uh, the Every Nation Society uh, or the Every Nation Ministry uh, with government as well as uh, on, the, on the university campus. And I want to pray, Lord God, that 
the whole process will go smoothly, everything will, will be clear from the start, uh, and there's tremendous favor as they're engaging in this process that no documents will be lost or uh, any, um, you know, uh, stumbling block in this process, Lord. Would you help them? Would you um, favor them in this process, Lord God, in the name of Jesus? Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, number three, um, well, the last prayer point is basically for the Namibian team. Uh, and uh, as we are um, preparing to go to Zambia, um, the team is already finalized. So uh, we want to pray that God will continue to work on our hearts, preparing us um, as we are going to Zambia to train. We will be equipping the team there. We'll be doing evangelism and as well as um, uh, one to one discipleship. Uh, so that's the main aim of, of the trip. We are busy preparing for that. Um, and also we are trusting God to go before us so that as we are um, going into Zambia, that the place will be prepared for us. The fields, as the scripture says, the fields are ripe for harvest. Um, we will find people ready and prepared to receive Jesus, uh, to be engaged with, and they are ready to become disciples of Jesus Christ. So we are just trusting for a fruitful time there with lasting impact. Let us pray. Lord God, I want to pray for the Namibian team as we are busy preparing. Lord God, um, I want to pray that all of us as a team, we are engaging in this process of preparing. Uh, that we are ready, that we are um, placing ourselves before you and saying, Lord, use us. We are here for you. We're here for your service, Lord God. We want to make an impact in Zambia. And I pray that the impact will be a lasting, fruitful impact in Zambia in the name of Jesus for generations to come. I pray, Lord God, would you go before us and prepare Lusaka, prepare uh, the campus, prepare the, the communities around Lusaka where we will be walking uh, on the ground and every place where we place our foot will be prepared so that we can take new ground for the kingdom of God in Lusaka, Zambia, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, thank you that you are building your church um, in Zambia and that you are preparing, you are going before us, Lord God, um, and that we can expect, Lord God, a great harvest uh, of, of people coming into your kingdom, as well as people being discipled and raised up as leaders to impact the nation of Zambia for generations to come. So thank you, Lord God, for this time of praying, of giving thanksgiving uh, for uh, what you've as well as what you are busy doing in Zambia. I give you honor and glory in Jesus' name. Please keep on praying uh, for Dave and his team in Ochovarongo, as well as the Every Nation uh, Zambia, uh, Zambian team, as we are busy uh, preparing and engaging them in the next few weeks to come. Thank God, I appreciate you. Thank you for partnering with us in praying, giving, and going. God bless you. Amen. Hello everyone and welcome once again to our online broadcast. Every week it's a wonderful pleasure for us to be together, especially for those of you who are unable to make it into the service in live, but it's always a, a blessing to have the opportunity to share the Word of God uh, together. I just want to highlight once again, tomorrow is Monday, our day of prayer and fasting, and it's going to be relevant, obviously, because of our subject today. We also had a fantastic time on the prayer camp, uh, encountering the Holy Spirit in prayer and really uh, have a strong conviction. We have a strong conviction that the Holy Spirit is pouring out a spirit of supplication and, and intercession in uh, onto our church. And I believe that many of us will become very passionate about prayer over the next couple of weeks. And so uh, today we're also starting with a two-part series that's going to run today and on the next week. And it's on the subject of fasting. We have our fasting week that's coming up starting on the following Sunday. And uh, today we're going, to, uh, we're going to speak on the power of fasting. Next week we'll touch on the practicals of fasting and just practical um, guidelines from the Word of God and, and medically on how to fast and, and how to go about that. And uh, so I'm going to pray for us and then we'll get right into the Word of God. So Father, we thank you. Lord, for this wonderful opportunity to get into your word. 
We thank you that your word is always an encounter for us, Lord. And we pray that uh, it will cut in every area where it needs to cut, that it will heal in the areas where it needs to heal, and that it will bring your purpose about in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And so, yes, uh, it is an exciting time that we're in coming into the middle of the year after much of what's happened during this year. Uh, it is definitely a time to uh, review the year, to look back at some of the promises that we've been trusting the Lord for since the beginning, uh, some of the goals and plans that we had, uh, trusting the Lord in the beginning of the year. And uh, we, we always go into a, a seven day, eight day fast at the middle of the year as we uh, move and proceed towards the rest of the year. And so in preparation for our week of prayer and fasting, we wanted to give you an equipping time and really uh, share the word of God in this area. And it's important because whatever we do without revelation becomes a very religious and legalistic action, which drains our energy and our resources and doesn't bring the fruit that the word of God intends for our lives. And so as we going into our time of prayer and fasting, many people religiously fast. Many different religions actually involved um, or, or engage in the in the practice of fasting, and so uh, when when believers fast, it's not just some kind of um, self punishment. It is not just a relig religious act that we are engaging into. There are reasons. There are revelations as to why. We fast, and we're going to touch on that today, and also on the power and the effects of fasting. Now, you might ask yourself, okay, what is fasting exactly? Now, this is a very uh, general uh, definition, and the fasting is going to relate to not only food, but it can be applied to different areas of our lives. And so it's a, a form of abstinence. And so fasting is denying the body, denying the body, and denying the soul, the soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions, in order to allow the spirit to rule or to gain ascendancy, dominance, and preeminence. You know, most believers who are born again and still struggle with carnality or some kind of sin issue or some kind of addiction or some kind of oppression, Many times it's because of the dominance of the voice of the body, the dominance of the voice of the emotions and the mentality that they have. And what fasting does is it switches down, it turns down the volume of the voice of the body and the voice of the soul so that the spirit man can gain the preeminence. And the word of God is very clear from the book of Galatians. The fruit of the flesh is different from the fruit of the spirit. And when we allow the spirit to gain ascendancy, that's when we see the fruit of the spirit coming. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. In comparison to all sorts of immorality and all sorts of wickedness that comes from the impulses of the flesh and impulses of, of the sh uh, soulish realm. Now, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, has a, a, a reference to this tripartite nature of mankind. It says, we pray that God himself, the God of peace, will make you pure, belonging only to him, this is very important. As a believer, you must see the exclusivity of your body, soul, and spirit in belonging to God. And then it says, we pray that your whole self, spirit, soul, and body will be kept safe and blameless when our Lord Jesus Christ comes. And so this is the work of sanctification and cleansing your life from the moment when you're born again, cleansing your life and allowing your spirit to dominate so that you are more and more reflecting the image and imitation of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And so from the scripture, we see very clearly that you have three parts. Man, 
and woman, you all have a body and that's most of the time the part we relate to, our physical body. And in the body, that's where we experience our physical energy. That's where we see with our natural senses, our, our sense of sight, hearing, touch, smell, taste and feeling or, or, or sensory. And that we feel in our body. But then we have our soul. And our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. And in that realm, we also have senses. We also have the ability in our soul to, to sense things emotionally, to, send, uh, to discover things intellectually with our mind, and also to, to sense things. Um, it's our mind, our will, and our emotions to use our will in order to exercise the, 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 the preferences of the soul. And then you have your spirit man. Your spirit man is the part of you that is born of God. That's the part of you that is holy and righteous. That's the part of you that is supposed to influence the rest of, of, of your being. And that's the part that is connected, infused and joined together with the spirit of God. That is the part that is identical to Christ. It says that we have received the spirit of his son crying out, Abba, Father. And so the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us. We are born of the spirit. Whatever is born of the spirit is spirit. Whatever is born of the flesh is flesh. And that's why it's so important that we must be born again. Because the man who is not born again doesn't have his spirit connected, born connected with God. He is not offspring of God from the spirit realm. He has a spirit, but is disconnected. He is like a, an appliance that is not plugged into the power. And so his spirit man is dead and he operates mainly with certain spiritual faculties through the soul and the body. That's the carnal man. Now, Matthew chapter six, verse 16 to 18 begins to explain about what happens. And this is Jesus quoting when we fast, how we ought to do it. It says, when you fast, do not look somber. And here it's very important that we notice not if you fast, but when you fast. So Jesus is presuming that we are going to fast. And how should we fast? He says, do not look somber and depressed as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting and so many people do it in order to gain some kind of accolade and uh, have people approve of them but the question is whether God approves of the kind of fasting that you are involved with and then he says truly I tell you they have received their reward in full so if you're fasting for the sake of the applause of people that's all you're gonna get but then he says but when you fast Put oil on your head, meaning uh, wash yourself and 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 uh, sort of groom yourself. Put oil on your head and wash your face. Verse eighteen, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your father who is unseen, and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And this reward is openly, like when you pray in secret. Now, obviously, in our church, we've started fasting on a weekly basis. We know that this is something that we do as a community, and you don't get any special, um, uh, any special recognition in the church for fasting as a community. And that is a blessing of the Lord because we are submitting ourselves and humbling ourselves to the guidance and leadership of the church. But there must be instances where you fast privately, where no one knows that you fasted today. And there are matters that you are bringing before God in humility. Now we are going to go eventually to Isaiah 58 and just touch on the benefits of that. We're just getting through to the introduction. Now, one of the things that is important, many people say, yeah, but we are in the New Testament now, a fasting and, and, and circumcision, all those things are in the Old Testament. No, 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 no. The benefit of fasting remember, is that it strengthens you spiritually at the expense of your body and your soul, because we are still 
mankind. We were mankind in the Old Testament. We are still mankind in the New Testament. The benefit is still there. Our motivations are refined, but the benefit is still there. We see, firstly, in the Old Testament, Moses fasted. This is Exodus 34 and 28. And he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And then he went back up again. I think it was a, a stretch of about 80 days. And we don't recommend that unless if you have a clear word from the Lord. And then we've got Daniel who fasted. There's something called the Daniel fast where he didn't take any any food, that any choice food. He didn't. And so we can look at uh, Daniel chapter 10 verse uh, verse 2 to 3. And that was where he had his encounter with the angel who was uh, having battle in the heavenlies. Daniel fasted. Daniel also prayed three times a day. So this was a fasting man. And you could see the promotion of God in his life as well. And then, and he was in a wicked empire getting promoted and being used by God to advise kings. Nineveh fasted. This is Jonah chapter 3 verse 5 where God said to Jonah, go and preach to them. And if they repent, then I'll forgive them. And so the mercy came as a result of the fasting of the entire nation. They were in sackcloth and ashes. And this points to what fasting is. Fasting is a kind of humiliation. It is a self humility. And the book of James clearly says that God resists the proud, but he gives favor and grace to the humble. Even if you are not right with God, you can get into a place of favor with God because of your humility. The primary favor that you can get, which is the bulk of God's favor, is receiving the very son of God. And it requires humility to do that. But once you have that, there are many things that we're engaging the Lord in that are factors of his grace. I want to get free of something. You need the grace of God for everything. And it's not that God is dishing out grace as you are fasting. No, fasting humbles us and it is our way of receiving grace. It's not that God has not given his grace. The word of God is very clear in Titus. It says that the grace of God has appeared to all men. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and to deny worldly lusts. And so the grace of God is appearing. Jesus Christ died. He said so that no one may perish. Anyone who believes in him, he loved the world so much. He sent his only son so that anyone who believes would not perish, but have eternal life. So Jesus is the manifestation of the grace of God. And so the grace of God comes to us in humility. If you are proud, you cannot receive Christ. You cannot get saved. You will not recognize that you're a sinner and you will also not fast because you, you feel like in your flesh, that's where your strength is. Then Esther chapter 4 verse 16, Esther fasted when she was about to go before the king, which was against the law. But she had to do it for the sake of saving the entire nation who were going to be annihilated. And she said to Mordecai, tell all the Jews, no one must eat, not, uh, not the parents, not the children, uh, not even the animals for three days. And then they, they saw a deliverance on a national level. Then Matthew chapter 4 verse 2, Jesus fasted. So who are you not to fast? Jesus was driven of the devil, or not of the devil. <laughs> Jesus was driven of the Holy Spirit to be tempted of the devil in the wilderness. And he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, not eating anything. And then the apostles fasted, uh, Acts chapter 13, verse 2. They were fasting, ministering unto the Lord in prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. It's amazing that your, your fasting and your humbling yourself and saying, I'm putting everything aside to focus on the Lord, even my food, that Jesus, that God, my Father is more important, that his word is more important than even my food, even my water. And so the apostles fasted. The apostle Paul fasted. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27. He fasted often, often. He was in fastings. So there are many examples, even in the Old and New Testament, of the benefit of fasting or the model of fasting in those whom God used. Now, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done. In view of God's mercy, give your bodies to God. 
You have to surrender your body. Many people who call themselves Christians in our nation and in, in the nations of the world and on their TikToks and on their Instagrams call themselves Christians, but they are not living sacrifices. And this is so important because it says, let them be living sacrifices, living and holy sacrifice, the kind that God will find acceptable. And this is the true way to worship him. It's your reasonable act of worship. He says, I beseech you by the mercies of God that you give up your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing unto him. And this is your reasonable worship. Most people, many people, they major on worshiping with their lips, but their bodies don't belong to God in the sense that they have been sacrificed to the Lord in holiness and in, 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 in sacrifice. And it's so important that we realize that this is the way that God wants to be worshipped, not only in song, but in the, the way that you conduct the temple, hallelujah. And we are the temple, the worship comes from the temple. It's not just through the front door of the mouth. It has to be in the way that we steward our, our passions, our feelings, our desires, our appetites in subjection in order to recognize the Lordship of Christ that will be led in all things by the Holy Spirit. Now, why are we saying this? We are saying this because fasting is a way of ushering your body and your soul to a place of sacrifice. It is a form of worship. Now, what are some of the things that we ought to fast or that we can fast? There's something called a dry fast, and that is where you eat nothing. And we will share practicals around that in the next message on the following Sunday. So please pay attention. We'll see if we can even have a medical doctor that will share on, on, on that message as well. But you can fast food. You can fast sugar or sweets, especially if your children, uh, if you're a godly family, involve your children in the fasting. Put off the television. You can fast coffee. You know, there are many who are part of the uh, global, worldwide coffee cult, as I call it, <laughs> because they are committed to their coffee. They say, oh, I can't make it through my day without, I can't even start my day without my coffee, blah, 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 blah. You know, maybe you know, uh, uh, use your Bible and prayer. But anyway, so you can fast coffee. Woo! You can fast coffee and then you can fast alcohol. Alcohol, those of you who are beer drinkers and wine drinkers and all, fasting the alcohol. You can fast meat and only have vegetables and starch. You can fast television. You know, even if it's news or whatever, Netflix. I saw a statistic that uh, apparently um, most of the internet um, what do you call it? Traffic is being spent on Netflix in Namibia. A uh, very, very amazing in terms of the websites as well. And then there's a uh, Facebook, Facebook. You can also fast Facebook, social media. You can uh, get off from your Instagram, get off from TikTok, get off from all those things during that time, only focusing on the Lord. Remember, you are turning down the volume in your soul and in your body. And then also you can fast certain attitudes. Like you say to yourself, over the next three days, I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to criticize. Anything I say, I, I, I see wrong. I'm going to find something good to, 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 to be able to thank God for. You know, maybe my car stops on the side of the road or I don't know, whatever it is, you know, that I'll be thankful all the time, etc. And so the fasting, primarily, I would advise you, for those of you who usually do a soul fast in the things of um, like entertainment and all of that, that's good, but your body must also feel it. And in fact, the scriptures uh, allude to the fact that even sexual intercourse in marriage, right? You can, and it has to be by agreement. If your spouse gives you a hint that they're not keen, <laughs> you need to continue to massage them. And so continue with that. But on agreement that you will take time aside, even from that intimacy, sexual intimacy, in order to only focus on the word of the Lord, only on, on prayer during the time of fasting. 
Now, I'm reading here concerning the benefits of fasting, some of the 18 effects of fasting. Isaiah 58 is the fasting chapter, and um, it speaks about how many times people fast with the wrong motives and is this the way that you want to fast it will not be acceptable before god and then he says this is isaiah 58 we're reading here from verse 6. he says is not this the kind of fasting i've chosen to loose the chains of injustice and to untie the cord of the yoke the cords of the yoke to set the oppressed free and to break every yoke a yoke is um, a, a farming implement that would be put on two uh, plowing animals, whether it be two horses or two donkeys or two cows, and it would connect them together. That's called a yoke. And so it's a sign of slavery and labor. And so uh, he says that, the, that this is the kind of fasting he desires to remove the yoke from people's lives, the bondage to remove the slavery, the subservient nature, even that, that is imposed not only by the devil, but imposed by the flesh, imposed by the soul, imposed by the emotion, imposed by the addictions to all sorts of things like food and entertainment, breaking those yokes. And then it says, is it not to share your food with the hungry? and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter. And this is something that we recommend, that while you are fasting, continue to make your lunch in the morning and take it with to work so that you can give it to someone on the side of the road or that you can give your food that you would have eaten to someone else. Then it says, when you see the naked to clothe them and not turn away your own flesh and blood, meaning being good to your family and, and, and human beings. And then your light will break forth like the dawn. Hallelujah. We're talking about the benefits of fasting. Your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. And so what are some of the, the benefits that we'll see in this chapter? I'll just go through point by point on them. Number one, your light will break forth. Light refers to revelation. The word of God says the entrance of your word brings light. You know, many times we've studied the word of God and we just don't get something. But during fasting, there is a grace of revelation that can open up. Then he goes on number two benefit. Your healing will quickly appear. There are many of us that struggled in our body, physical body, trusting the Lord for healing in a certain area or where we're struggling in our emotions, start, uh, trusting the Lord for healing because of trauma or something in our soul. That healing can come even through fasting. In fact, there was a time when the disciples were ministering to the one child who was epileptic, and then they couldn't cast out the, the, the evil spirit that was causing that condition. And Jesus healed the boy, and then later on the disciples asked, why couldn't we heal him? And then Jesus uh, concludes that he says, because of your unbelief, but then he says, this kind only comes out by prayer and fasting. And so some dispute whether that is in the original text and all of that, but the principle is clear that in fasting, it heightens your prayer. It heightens your faith. It heightens your ability to discern spiritual things because your body is an encumbrance. When Jesus returns the second time, we'll have the salvation of our bodies as well, where we'll be just like him with a glorified body. But now we still have this house that we are trying to put off that is full of temptation, that many times is, is the one that is full of tiredness. Want to read my Bible? And the body says no. Want to pray for hours and the body says no. And the soul is all. And so all of that in fasting, you are beginning to condition yourself unto godliness. Number three, it says your righteousness will go before you. And so it, this is not only having an understanding that I'm right with God, but you'll begin to see righteousness coming forth in your life and your righteousness will also impact other people. And then uh, number four, the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. There is a protection that is beginning to be brought into your life when you are someone who fasts over you and over your family. And if you sense that you are going to be in a place of danger, that you should fast, you should go into a time of fasting to take advantage of this, of this grace. 
And then you will call and the Lord will answer. Many people have had experiences and testimonies about how in the time of fasting, they received an answer. Why? Because God answers prayer according to how we pray. The word of God is very clear that if we ask anything according to his will, it will be done. You can't just ask anything. You can't just ask for your uh, your your friend's wife uh, uh, as 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 a, a gift from God, and you can't just ask for your 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 friend's car. And you know, covetous prayers. No. And so when you're fasting, you you're putting those desires aside and being led by the Lord. And then it says, "You will cry for help, and He will say, Here am I.' And you will feel the presence of the Lord very near." To you, And then the next one, and this is um, number seven, your light will arise in the darkness. Your influence will begin to show forth. Your ministry grace will begin to influence other people. Your, the wisdom of God on you will begin to influence. You know, this is just what happened. God has called us. Our spirit man is light. Because it's the same, mm, it's connected to the Spirit of God, but it's like we are shrouded and covered in the, by, by the flesh and by the soul. And so when we fast, we set those aside and you see an opening and you see that influence coming through. And then uh, there's another one, it says, your night will become like the noon day, things that are were darkness. It's, it's like you'll be delivered from darkness. You'll be delivered from blindness, spiritual blindness. You'll be delivered from a place of confusion. The lights will begin to go on. And so when we're fasting next week, you must have an expectation for these things. We're going to be fasting for seven days and God can do so much. Day one, day two, day three, you begin to see those things coming through. The next benefit is that the Lord will guide you. Number nine, the Lord will guide you always. In the place of fasting, he will always guide you. If your fasting is to humble yourself before the Lord, he will always guide you. Number 10, the Lord, you, uh, the Lord will um, satisfy your needs in a sun scorched land. You will begin to have a sense of contentment and then your needs will be met as well. Mm. And this is, you know, God desires to meet our needs and we have to get to a place where we can humble ourselves and approach the, uh, the throne of grace with boldness in order to have our needs met. And uh, take note of the sun scorched land. It means we will have our needs met while we are in a desert place, meaning economically it might be a desert. It might be a desert in terms of what the economy is doing, what the petrol price is doing, what the interest rates are doing. But for those of us who are fasting and praying, we are humbling ourselves and we are expecting that the Lord will satisfy our needs in a sun scorched land. And then number 11, the Lord will strengthen your frame, strengthen your frame, your constitution, meaning your bones, meaning your stature. He will strengthen it. And then number, number, uh, uh, number, this is number 12. And then number 12, it says, you will be like a well watered garden, like a spring whose waters Never fail. Hallelujah. You know, many times we have so many people, they are saved, they are believers, but they just don't see the, the animation. They don't see the, the spontaneous life that should be coming from them as those who have eternal life in them. The word of God says, you as the son has life. And so you begin to be like a well-watered garden, not just dry and scrawny, but really lush and fruitful. And then number 13, your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will raise up the old age old foundations. There is a family restoration. There is a community restoration. Whenever the people of God humble themselves in fasting, things that in the past the enemy might have destroyed or stolen will be returned. 
those ancient ruins, things that were left broken will be rebuilt. Hallelujah. And it says your people will do it. And it's so, so it's, it's not just that God is doing it. There is a strengthening that comes to us that begins to heal and restore almost like the immune system rebuilds itself. And then it says you will be called repairer of broken walls. Number 14. And so it will become so evident so obvious that uh, people will give you the name that that person is a restorer wherever they come your reputation will be in fact impacted as someone who is positive who finds solutions to problems who repairs broken walls who restores relationships and then it says the next benefit is you will be a restorer of streets with dwellings and it says there that it, you, you'll be able to, to, to impact the places where you live, restoring the, the paths where people dwell. You'll be able to influence your neighborhood, influence your family, your home. You know, many of us, uh, we do well in coming to church, but when we go home, it's like warfare the whole time. You know, and God's desire is for our home to be a sanctuary where other people come and they come to find Christ. And you might say, yeah, but I've prayed and I haven't seen really my family being touched and my home is always full of oppression. Fast, fast. When you fast, you'll be a restorer of streets with dwellings. Then uh, uh, the next one, it says, you will find your joy in the Lord. Hallelujah. There are many people in our generation who are struggling with a uh, sense of depression, anxiety, um, stress, and, and all of that. And it's just taking over their joy. It's almost like it doesn't matter if they're prosperous financially, doesn't matter if they're healthy, they just can't be happy. But when you fast, when you fast, when you fast, these are some of the benefits that begin to come in, that you will find your joy in the Lord, in the Lord. You will see that all the things, food, candy, uh, TV, Netflix, social media, people, all of those things are not the true source of joy. When you put them off and you switch them out, then you begin to find your joy in the Lord. And then it says you will rise on the heights of the land. Hallelujah. This shows promotion. This shows that God will elevate you. Why? Because God is always looking to and fro throughout the earth for whom on whose behalf he may be strong, whose heart is fully committed to the Lord. And because in fasting, that's what begins to happen. It requires a commitment to, uh, of the heart to the Lord in order for us to fast with humility. And so then it says, you will, ri you will rise on the heights of the land. Why? The word of God says, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and in due season, in due season, in due season, he will lift you up. And obviously one of the benefits will be that you will rise on the heights of the land. This is a national impact, regional impact. And God always wants to give his children influence because we are extending the kingdom of God. And then number 18, you will feast on the inheritance of your father, Jacob. Hallelujah. You know, we have an inheritance in the Lord and many people never take advantage of that inheritance. We have received an inheritance. The word of God says, because we are sons, we are also heirs and joint heirs with Christ. And in our inheritance, Abraham did not only inherit spiritual things. He inherited the whole earth. Hallelujah. And so when we are in the place of fasting, connecting with the Lord, there are many even natural things that the Lord will cause us to, to begin to enter into. Now, you have to watch yourself that you're not fasting out of greed and selfishness. No, you want your portion. And inheritance is what is due to you. You're not taking anyone else's part. You just want your portion, your, your calling to be fulfilled, your, your destiny in the area of your spirit, in the area of your body, in the area of your soul, in the area of your family, in the area of your finances, in the area of your community, all those areas, your inheritance will be be found and you will not only find it you will feast on it hallelujah you will feast on it and so these are the benefits you know in summary you know one of the key things one of the key things that God loves is a humble 
a humble spirit, a contrite, broken and contrite heart, you will never reject Psalm 51. And this is something that uh, the, the Bible says David had. He was a, a man of humility. This is something that Moses had. He was a man of humility. Even though they were asking God, oh yeah, but what about this? What about that? The Lord saw the humility in their hearts and they were fasting men and, and women. And then this is what happens when you are fasting. You are going through that place of humility. There's a cleansing and a holiness. There are people who've given their lives to the Lord. You're watching me now and you've been struggling with this sin for years and it's not broken. I'm telling you, fast. Fast till your body tells you, we are dying, you are going to die here. <laughs> and then until that voice gets silent, the more it says we are gonna die, I say I'll fast another day until you begin to gain the ascendancy. Then clarity of perception, we've said that before. This is what happens when we fast. If you're praying about something, direction, fast, you'll begin to dream, you'll begin to have encounters with the Holy Spirit. If you are trusting the Lord to enter into a ministry and you want to see the power of God flowing fast, fast. Why? Because it requires the grace of God to move in the power of God. And how do you get the grace of God? By humility. And when you humble yourself, you put aside your, your flesh and your soul that says it's impossible. No, it cannot happen. And your spirit man begins to press your faith. And then you begin to see the power of God. You know, it also, uh, fasting removes unbelief and doubts, you know, because it gives you revelation. It gives you revelation. It opens your eyes. It causes light to come in. And fasting, when we all fast together as a church, it fosters unity. All of us are denying ourselves. All of us are not eating. All of us are putting aside our social media. And as a church, it builds a, a powerful unity. And what does unity do? God commands a blessing where there is unity. That's why I want to encourage you, if you are a couple, fast together. If you are a family, fast together. Maybe the children will only be having vegetables, but uh, the couple can dry fast or they only have, have juice or whatever, but we'll deal with the practicals on next Sunday. But I want to encourage you that you must understand that there is a blessing in fasting. This is wonderful. It is the same as saying, I'm going to exercise. There's a blessing to fitness. But the word of God says in the book of Timothy, uh, physical exercise is of some value, but godliness, godly exercise is of value in this life and in the next. Hallelujah. Awesome. So I pray that you've been inspired, you've been encouraged, that you've been uh, clearly um, equipped with the why of fasting. Your heart needs to be at the right place. God is all about motives. <laughs> if you give up your body to be burned, but you have not loved, it profits you nothing. If you say you have love, but you it's not real from the inside, it profits you nothing. First Corinthians 13, if you speak in tongues of men and of angels, or if you are able to move mountains and, and have the gift of prophecy, but you don't have love, your heart, your love for God, your motive is everything. And you ought to fast from the motive of I'm humbling myself before God so that God can have his way with this living sacrifice. Amen. I want to pray for us that God will prepare our hearts this week as we're coming into the fast that uh, none of us will be discouraged from participating and that we, we are set up for an encounter. So Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you that your word is true. And because it is true, it is working in our lives, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that as we come into our fasting week, Lord, I pray for encounters upon encounters for every person that's watching today. I thank you, Lord, even as we invite one another together as families, Lord God, as connect groups, Lord God, as leaders, Lord God, as a church, Father, that we'll see an impact on a national level because of our fasting. I pray, Lord, that all of us will have our eyes open to perceive that which you are showing us, Lord. I pray, Lord, for those who are still struggling and saying, should I fast, should I not? I pray, God, that you convict their hearts and give them clear, clear, clear conviction of the, the importance of fasting. 
Lord, I pray for those who have uh, heard about how there's so much grace and they don't need to fast anymore. I pray, Lord, that you'll correct their hearts, Lord, and make them realize that they still need their body under subjection and their spirit gaining the ascendancy and only fasting is fasting. So I thank you, Lord, for revelation. I pray for every person, Lord God, to begin to experience your Holy Spirit in a new way this coming week. And I pray for those who are watching, who are sick, that they may be healed, Lord. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. I see someone who is having severe bowel issues. It's like gastro or something like that, but it comes every weekend or something like that. But the Holy Spirit is touching you right now. It's like an allergy of some kind that, that you're not sure, but it's been there for a long time. God is healing you of that. And if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you can't just go to church. People go to church, end up in hell because uh, the church is not necessarily the door to heaven. Christ Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. So pray with me, say, Lord Jesus, I recognize that I'm a sinner. I give my whole heart to you. I receive you as my savior and my Lord. I believe that you died for me on the cross for my sins. And three days later, you were raised from the dead and you are alive today, a living savior. Come into my heart, be the Lord of my life and use my life as a living sacrifice. In Jesus name, amen, amen. Awesome, so I, I trust that you are blessed by that. We will see you soon. During the fast, we will be praying every single day of the week are right here in our venue. So please join us as much as you can. It's always an encouragement to join together as a group as we are fasting. May the Lord bless you. Continue to enjoy the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening. For more information about this podcast and other resources, please visit envintook.org.